Welcome back to the Korean Cowboys podcast. Yes, welcome back. And we are here again this week with another fabulous topic for us to discuss with you. We will be discussing uh, popular superstitions that exist in America and in Korea. Yes, because we are the Korean Cowboys and we are your multilingual, multicultural kings. We will be discussing (laughs) them from both aspects, you know. Yes, so some of our viewers might be like, what is a superstition? So I have the actual dictionary definition out right now. Um, It is a widely held but unjustified belief in supernatural causation leading to certain consequences of an action or event or a practice based on such a belief. That was really difficult. <laughs> that is a that is a that's a really hard definition, but um, we'll just assume that you guys understood it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of popular superstitions around the world that um, I'm sure our American viewers know. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are some that we know? Some popular American superstitions. Um, well, there's big ones that I remember hearing when I was little. One was never step on the crack in between the cement on a sidewalk. Did oh, you yeah, ever hear yeah. that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's one. Uh, never swallow watermelon seeds. That was another one that I got taught. I don't know where that one's from, honestly. All this, I saw it on Rugrats, and I, I think, think it scared me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I um, mean, like, the more popular ones are what? Like, if you see a black cat, like, don't cross, like, mm-hmm. you know, like, don't cross a black cat. Um, Like, you'll have bad luck. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't walk under a ladder. Right. That's also, like, bad luck. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a whole bunch. Don't don't break a mirror. Don't open an umbrella inside. That sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but for some of the more famous ones, we did a little bit of research so yes. that we can kind of explain to you guys where it comes from and why it's like that. And that's not just for the American ones either. Also for the Korean ones. Yes. We have the background story. We got the, the tea, as they say. <laughs> so we'll be going in the order of America first, and then we'll mm-hmm. do Korea after, yeah? Right. All right, so the first one that we found out um, Mm -hmm. uh, about America is don't step on sidewalk cracks. Yeah, see, this was like a big thing. I, I... I subconsciously do it still. Like I pers- I try to avoid the cracks in, in, in a sidewalk. Yeah. Because apparently it causes bad luck. I'm not exactly sure why. I couldn't find out why that was a thing. So that's the first one. The second one is, I don't know. Do you know about this one? Don't pick up a coin that is heads down. I've never heard of You've that You've never one. heard that. So no. if you see like a penny or a quarter or whatever, if it's tails up, don't pick it up. Because it's supposed to be bad luck. Now, between you and me, if it's a penny, I might just leave it. If it's a dime, I'll sit there and, and, you know, kind of be like, "Uh, should I? But if it's a quarter, forget about it. Mm. I just got to say, bro, that was a pretty good rhyme. If it's tails up, don't pick it up because it brings bad luck. (laughs) <laughs> you know when I was rapping, not me, Not bro. only am I a multicultural king, I'm a rap king. Em- <laughs> What's up, Eminem? <laughs> so uh, you also mentioned don't open an umbrella indoors. Uh, where does that one come from? Uh, I actually don't. I, I didn't know about that one either. But yeah. that's also basically all the ones that we're mentioning right now kind of associate themselves with bad luck. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I think I did read something very briefly that it had something to do with in Victorian England or even before that. Um, someone who opened an umbrella indoors and died right away. So I think that's kind of where it came from. Oh, okay. Like okay, this okay, is like okay. back in the, you know, the medieval days yeah, 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 or whatever, yeah. you okay, know. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, this is one that's um, a lot of people talk about. Bad luck comes in threes. Bad luck comes in threes. I have heard this one before. Yeah, that one's really like, especially with a lot of conspiracy theorists who yeah. think that <laughs> if you haven't watched that episode, go check it out. Uh, <laughs> nice plug, right? But um, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, so it's say. Three things on a, on a scale of fortune. Yeah. If something bad happens, you can fully expect two more things that are bad to happen. Now, I think that this is more like, you know, you're you're hyping yourself up. Yeah. You're like, oh man, one bad thing happened. And then another thing, you might interpret it as really bad, even though it's not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's also that one. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, Don't swallow watermelon seeds. Okay, yeah. since you didn't know about this one, I'll talk about it. Yeah. I used to get told when I was little that if I swallow watermelon seeds... It's the only seed from a fruit that will grow inside of you. Oh, yeah. No, I've heard that one before. Okay, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, like, you're, you'll be all 
pot bellied with like this huge watermelon grown inside of you. So you that's why eat, you guys can eat the seeds. You guys don't die. Like, I mean, I mean, ever since I grew up, I I eat the seed. I just eat the whole thing. Rind. I, honestly, <laughs> I avoid the black seeds. I take those out. Uh, yeah, you don't want to chew them because they're bitter. They're bitter and they're like hard. Yeah, and then they're not. Yeah. What, what is this? What are we? Uh, Martha Stewart. Okay. Like, <laughs> Whole piece, guys. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, Paula Dean. Let's let's pass on now. <laughs> All right, guys. So we're gonna get into details. Yeah. For a few of these. So uh, the first uh, famous one that mm. I'm sure a lot of people know is "Don't walk under a ladder." Yes. I'm, is that a thing in Korea? You think? I I mean, I don't understand any situation in Korea where I would have to walk under a ladder. Yeah. Because in the states, you know, a lot of people that they do their own housing like refurbishments and stuff like that. So almost every household owns a ladder. Yeah. I know yeah. my dad owns at least two. So, yeah. like, you might be exposed to that sort of thing, but I don't know how many people in Korea actually even own ladders that are, like, homeowners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because we all live in apartments. So, um, yeah. So, why? Why? what, what about this particular So, thing? I guess um, this comes from a, I guess, Christian lore. Mm -hmm. So, a ladder forms a triangle, right? Mm -hmm. And if you walk under it, it's, like, blasphemous to, like, Christianity, apparently, because, you know, the Holy Trinity, the yeah. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Um, and I guess that just kind of took root in American superstition and people just don't walk under ladders because yeah. like, like they say, um, it brings bad luck if you walk under a ladder. Right. I mean, if you look at the, a lot of the ones that we're going to mention today, they're very rooted in Christianity, which is yeah. really big in the United States historically, you know? Yeah, yeah. So a lot of these are going to have something to do with that. Um, but yeah, you don't want to break the Holy Trinity. That is not good. Yes. <laughs> The uh, next one, Joel. Yeah, okay. The next one is don't break a mirror. Okay. Now, I mean, obviously, you shouldn't break a mirror because it's dangerous. Duh. Duh. But uh, <laughs> for those of you guys who are wondering why you shouldn't break a mirror and what are the complications besides, obviously, uh, blood, uh, is that this actually stems from the wild, wild west. Yeah, yeah. If you, believe, if you can believe that, right? So the Korean cowboys are telling you why not to break a mirror. And that is because... The, the traditional idea back then was that if you looked into a mirror, part of your soul leaves your body and goes into the mirror. Okay. Okay. So that's anybody that has ever looked into a mirror, a part of their soul goes into the a mirror. mirror. Okay. And when someone passes away, what's left on this plane of existence would be their soul in whatever mirror they look, looked right. into. So if you broke it, that uh, dead person's soul would come out and haunt you. That's why you're not supposed oh. to break a mirror. Isn't okay. that weird? Because like we always knew about these, but we never knew why. So, you know, we're kind of like learning together right now. Okay. So like breaking the mirror, like releases the souls and then mm -hmm. those souls come to haunt you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That, that, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. Right. Yeah. Guys, yeah. don't get haunted. Not good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, guys. All right. How about this one? So the next one is breaking a wishbone. Now, do you know about this one? Thanksgiving. I don't know this one actually. No. Okay, so when you uh, go on Thanksgiving or even when you eat a, a chicken or something, they have the wishbone, right? You know what it looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the your family didn't do this for Thanksgiving. They you'd each per, uh, two people grab a wishbone and then they break it, and whoever gets the bigger half, um, they get the wish. You didn't know that? I did not know that. No. Okay. For so Thanksgiving, we would just cut it up and be like. Mm, okay, like, well, we can do all that. Uh, if you are like my family and we have this kind of tradition that whoever uh, breaks the wishbone gets their wish made. Uh, Did you just burp? <laughs> <laughs> Please we're not, don't. We're not editing this out. <laughs> Between the, the thing in my teeth and the burping, I'm a total slob, okay? But you know what? That's all right. Um, anyway, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> I was trying to like like go past it without like t you know what I mean? Yeah. But like failure. Thanks for calling me out, jackass. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so this actually stems way farther back than Christianity. It's back to Roman times. Okay. So like uh, before battle, they would have like these feasts or something like that, all these Roman soldiers, and they would break the bone. Uh, of the turkey or chicken or whatever fowl they chose to consume that day, yes. <laughs> avian creature. Fowl. Uh, okay. <laughs> they um yeah. So they that's kind of where it stems from. And two thousand years later, here we are still doing it, unless you're Aaron who doesn't do it. That's so, interesting. I've never done that. Really? Our American listeners, if you guys do that, let us know. I mean, I think it's kind of a, a like an older tradition that yeah. maybe not many people do it anymore, but uh, it is definitely something that my family still does. I've never even heard of that. Okay, yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. So the next one is uh, crossing your fingers. Oh, yeah. So I'm sure a lot of you guys like do, you know, like cross your fingers. Mm -hmm. Like when you're hoping for something to happen, you'll cross your fingers. Or like when you lie, like you also cross your fingers. Right? Yeah, so there, I think there's a difference there. I kind of want to like get into why they're different. But yeah. let me get into the background of why we cross our fingers, okay? So think about it. 
when you're crossing your fingers, keyword cross, it has also Christian, you know, okay, uh, Christian hints cross. of Christian, your Christianity in it. Yes. So when you cross your fingers, it basically is making a cross. And what it's doing is basically whatever I'm saying or doing, I'm speaking it into existence. I have the protection of, you know, whatever higher power you believe in. You have like you know, divine protection. Yeah, divine fortune. protection. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So this also is very heavily put in, uh, it comes from Christianity. Uh, so, and that's a big one. I mean, I don't, do Korean people do that, you think? I don't. Crossing fingers, um, I don't know, actually. I, I think I've seen it before. I've seen Korean people do it before, I think. Yeah, I've, 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 never, I've never seen anybody do it, but. I um, mean, I, I'll just say no, no. <laughs> Okay, cross your fingers, how should I know? Yeah. Um, but I wonder, though, if this is supposed to be divine protection or whatever, so why do you do it when you're lying? I wonder, because that's not, that's not good. That's like the opposite. You know what yeah, I mean? You know what? Let me look that up right now. Yeah, look Why at that. Why do people... Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm very limited right yeah, now. Yeah, Aaron burped uh, very <laughs> loud just now. Yeah, sure. We edited it out. <laughs> sure! <laughs> I'm going to sell you out, you son of a gun. <laughs> Why do people cross their fingers mm -hmm. when they... Jesus. I can't type... I'm typing with like one finger on this hand. Okay, so people... The use of the gesture is often considered by children as an excuse or by telling... Okay, that doesn't make sense. Why do you cross your fingers when lying? Why do we, Aaron? <laughs> okay, so it is speculated that Christians started making the cross symbol with their fingers when lying to protect themselves against God's wrath for breaking one of the commandments. Sometimes Christians would have to lie about being a Christian since the religion was outlawed under the penalty of death. Okay, so basically, <clears throat> it's all related yeah. to God, basically. Okay, so we have two different definitions, right? Mm -hmm. But I guess they kind of contradict each other. Mm -hmm. So one is like, if I cross my fingers, I have divine protection. The other is, they did it to, you know, they did it when lying to protect themselves against God's wrath, right? Mm. Well, I guess that is divine protection too, I guess, right? Okay, so it was basically, <laughs> I think what it sounds like is one of them was protect me and watch over me, and the other one was forgive me. So Yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. It's a it's a rabbit hole. Who yeah. knows? <laughs> All right, the next big one we have is Friday the 13th. <laughs> you know what that is? What is that? Is that Jason? Is that, that's Jason, right, from that movie, Friday the 13th? Jason Voorhees? Yeah, I think it's Jason, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, when he, when he walks around, he makes that sound. <laughs> oh, does he make a sound? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you didn't know that? I had no idea. Oh my god! The last Jason movie I saw was like I think Freddy, was it? What was it? Freddy Krueger versus Jason? What was that? Yeah, movie Freddy versus Jason. Yeah, Freddy versus Jason. Yeah. Right, that's what it was called. Right, yeah, that was like the last one I watched in like middle school, maybe. Mm. No, I remember that. That's weird because you know the character uh, Jason. Like I thought that the Friday the Thirteenth thing came from him. No, came, no, but no. it didn't. It's actually yeah. like a superstition that's way older than that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Aaron, what do you know about that? So, according to tradition, Jesus died on a Friday, mm -hmm. and I guess 13 is considered unlucky. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know why 13 is considered unlucky. Why is that? I actually don't know either. Huh. Here we go, Aaron. Look, look, look at Aaron. He's the guy with one hand, but he's doing all the searching. I'm such a bad friend. <laughs> why is 13 unlucky? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Some believe this is unlucky because one of those 13, Judas, was a betrayer of Jesus Christ. This so is it, sounding a lot like church right now. So, I'm like, so like one of, you know, um, he had 13 disciples and one mm -hmm. of them was Judas betrayed Jesus, right? Right. So I guess that's why 13 is considered oh, unlucky. The 13th disciple. Uh, oh, okay. That is interesting. Yeah. We weren't kidding when we said this was all related to religion today. Like a lot of them were. Yeah. That hmm. is actually very interesting. Um, but yeah, Friday the 13th, um, a lot of American people try not to do much on that day because they do mm. think it's bad luck. Mm -hmm. Um and just me growing up personally, it's like every time like Friday the 13th, I like, came around, I'd be like, oh, shit. <laughs> Bad luck. You know what I you mean? You know, I remember a couple years ago, Halloween fell on Friday the 13th. Halloween, Halloween fell, fell on Friday, Friday the 13th. The 13th. Halloween, Halloween fell on Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Which is crazy. Spooky. <laughs> um, but, oh, my gosh. Oh. <gasps> What? We should have done this episode on Halloween in costume, man. What were we thinking? Ah. I don't know. We'll, we'll do another episode <laughs> on Halloween. Yeah, I already have my costume picked out. But anyway, um, yeah. So, Friday the 13th. Everybody be scared of it. Live in fear. Black cats. That's what the last one we're going to talk about right now. Uh, for the American ones. Yes. Now, uh, black cats. I, I This is another one that I like subconsciously. Like, I don't even realize it, but I go out of my way to avoid them. Yeah. Because I have met some black cats. <clears throat> that are just total assholes. Uh, <laughs> like, seriously, like the worst cat I've ever met in my life. I know you're talking but about. But yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah, so why black cats, y'all? Um, it is because back in the day, 
back in the uh, day. Back in the day. You know, the, if you know anything about American history, uh, you'll know that witches are were a big part of American history, yes. Eastern United States history. Um, there was the Salem witch trials and like all this other stuff about burning witches. During the like, colonial. Like, yeah, during America. the colonial era. Yeah. Um, so people used to believe that witches were like these people that could corrupt you and, you know, like mess with you and kill you in your sleep and miasma and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. People believe like like mm. witchcraft was going on. So there were like witch hunts. And, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. And um, and there's some people, some like total Zoomers uh, that still think they're witches today. I knew a, I knew a girl in middle school that said she was a witch. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe there are witches, guys. Who knows? Who knows? No our, one oh, knows. Hold on. We're not, we're not talking bad about witches. Please don't curse us. But anyway, yes. um, yeah. So basically the black cat was the symbol for the witch. Yes. Back in the day so that superstition has carried on all through now so people it's kind of ingrained in american people's subconscious that witches uh take the form of black cats but they might have a point because that one black cat i mean lord jesus have mercy yeah that cat was a biatch oh my god oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah but um anyway yeah so in the 17th century black cats equals witches and it has carried on until the 21st century which is now yes mm -hmm. Yeah, so those are the big American ones. I mean, a lot of our foreign listeners probably don't even know about this. Yeah. So, like, you guys uh, get a little bit of, you know, information about American superstitions. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, we're going to go into the Korean ones. Mm -hmm. The first one uh, that we have for the Korean ones is death by fan. This hands down. See, this one's going to be a little bit more interesting because uh, the Korean ones are, like, more, they're fun to talk about. But um, fan death is probably the most famous one out of them all, I think. Yeah, so we're not talking about like, you know, like fans as in, as in like like you guys. No, 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 no. We we're, we're talking about like 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 a, like a, like a, like a fan that blows air like towards you. Yeah, you know? to cool you off in the summer heat. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and there there is a saying in Korea that if you sleep with the fan facing directly towards your face, like it'll suffocate you and you'll die in your sleep. Mm -hmm. I think it's a load of BS. I mean, it's but. clearly, but um, <laughs> I mean, clearly, because I sleep with the fan, like I said, practically in my mouth because it's so <laughs> hot. Um, but uh, <laughs> what do you call it? The reason why is because fans, like electric fans, yeah. they're relatively new in terms of like technology, right? They've only been around for about 100 years, um, like, you know, the electric ones. So yeah, yeah. Uh, the whole idea, same thing with cameras. When cameras first came out, people thought that it stole your soul. Remember? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, whenever this new technology comes out, people are like, ugh, about it. But in the 1920s in Korea, when fans really started to become popular, they thought that when you um, breathe in, you breathe in oxygen. When you breathe out, you breathe out carbon dioxide, right? Yes. So they used to think that if it was really close to your face, it would blow the carbon dioxide back into your mouth, and then you would die. Uh, that's basically what they think. Because I always thought about it. I was like, I mean, how can it suffocate you? Like, I never really, like, I tried to justify it somehow. I mean, if you say it like that, like, I guess, like, I guess I can understand why people would believe that. Mm -hmm. But it's also like, dude, if you're suffocating, your brain will send signals to your body to wake up. Yeah, no, like, yeah, no, for sure. But, um, yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, with the, people, we look at it now, right? People think that you could, um, die or you get your stole stolen from a camera or you can die from fan death like it's just it's just the ignorance of new technology you yeah know? i mean i don't really believe in it maybe there have been people who like have like had unfortunate deaths by fan of course it's possible it's possible but um somehow it's just, mm. i i've personally never like heard of or seen yeah, it never so yeah but it's i think it's something that I've, I've actually heard about this from when i was little from my mom and she was like don't ever sleep with a fan on uh, I'm in trouble when they come here because I sleep with the fan right next to me. So I'm going to hear it from my mom, but whatever. Because <laughs> right, your parents are coming soon. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah but um, yeah. So that's like the, I think the most famous one in Korea out of all of them that I know. Don't you think? Uh, no, I think the next one that I think the next one is more famous. It's don't write names in red ink. Yes. Uh, I think that might be the most popular superstition. Yeah, it could Korea, be actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the, you mentioned the fan death. I'm going to talk about the next one, which is don't write your names in red ink. Yeah. Now I never knew. I always knew about it. Are you burping again? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next one that I'm going to talk about right now, one of the most famous, and I don't think it's necessarily, I think it's more of an Eastern Asian thing, uh, but I'm not sure actually. Um, but don't write your name in red ink. Yes. That is like blas the most blasphemous out of all of them. I've actually seen people actually kind of get really offended if, yeah. you, if you do that. Like people will like make a conscious effort not to write anything right. in red ink. Um, I was never like that until I came to Korea. And mm. then like, I guess nowadays I kind of find myself avoiding red pens or trying yeah. to write in red pen. Mm -hmm. And um, where that superstition comes from is... 
I guess Korean people used to write the names of deceased people in red in the right. family registry. Mm-hmm. And so there's a saying that if you write someone's name in red, like that person will like die. And mm-hmm. it's, it's like a crazy superstition. Yeah, it's like basically cursing them to death. In, in America, they don't really have this. But in Korea, they have like a family registry, which is which has the names of you and all your ancestors on it. It's like an official document. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it goes back however long. But um, what do you call it? When someone passes away, they have to update that. And they always do it in red ink. I mean, I'm sure now they just do it with, you know, printer, but they used to do it in red ink. Um, so red ink means that they had passed and black ink means that they're still alive. Right. So basically, if you write someone's name in red ink, you're basically cursing them to death. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like it's considered really, really, really distasteful to do that. Yeah. And bad luck too. Like, you know, it's kind of like go die. Like, you know, it's that kind of thing. Yeah. So a lot of Korean people like refuse to write in red. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, find myself doing that too. I don't. Yeah. I find uh, myself doing that yeah. too. It's, I think there's another one of the subconscious things is kind of like gr- ingrained in me now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, uh, what's the next one? The next one is eating sticky things before an exam. I know about this one. Yeah. But I did not go to a Korean high school, so I didn't really think much of it. Yeah. Did so, your mom or dad like ever do this for you when you were in school? No, no, no. I, I, I'm not, actually, this is the first time hearing about this. Really? I mean, yeah. Oh. So apparently, if you eat something sticky before an exam or a test, the knowledge will apparently stick to you. Yeah. So I think tok and yot are the two really big ones oh. um, because they're very sticky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that? Oh. I'm saying, oh, what? <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so the really sticky thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't cut that out. The, st- <laughs> the sticky one, the sticky stuff, it basically, like, you know, when you study, you're trying to remember things and learn things. If you eat something sticky before an exam, you'll remember it. Now, the flip side of that is something slippery, like miyoku okay. or seaweed, seaweed soup. soup. Okay. That is really slippery. If you eat that, all your knowledge and all the things that you learned and memorized or whatever will slip off of you. Uh, you didn't know that? I didn't know that. No, that is crazy. I don't know. I, I always knew about it, but I never really like you know thought anything of it. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah, wow. I think now though, like now, I think it's changed a little bit. They've updated it to like different, more re, you know, uh, contemporary snacks or foods because yeah, not, you know, I mean, who knows? Talking yut, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so the next one we have is the number four. Represents bad luck. Yeah, this one is um, something I didn't know about until I came here. Yeah. And I remember getting into an elevator and I saw that there was the letter F instead of the number four. Okay. Uh, on In the elevator. Or they won't be a fourth floor at all. Like it'll just be like completely, it'll be like one, two, three, five. five. Like it'll be just not even be there. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, so why why do you why do you know why that is? Uh, so I looked it up and um, where that is derived from is the hanja mm-hmm. uh, for sa like chugul sa mm, like right. so like that that's using the word like like samang, samang like yeah. death right mm-hmm. and so people try to actively avoid using sa sa also means four in Korean mm. which is why people try to avoid the number four right yeah so uh, yeah I've seen this a lot especially if you go to like older buildings. Like, cause you know, I used to live down in the Shigors. So like, if you go over there, I think almost all the buildings down there don't have that. I think in Seoul, it's kind of become a little bit more contemporary. If you go to like these newer buildings, they, they have four, but um, yeah. Like if you, if you like, like old architecture, like there will almost like never be a fourth floor. Yeah. Or they'll like name it something else. Like he said F mm-hmm. or something, you know? Yeah. I used to see that all the time uh, down in Songtan. <laughs> Back in the day. Back in the day. Yeah. All, All right. right. What's our next one? Uh, here's another good one. Uh, no mirrors in front of the door. I actually learned about this recently. I, I don't even so know. So you don't have is. a mirror facing the door. So, you know, like if you go into an apartment or a house, there's a mirror usually next to the the um, the front door. The front door. Yes. So you can like see yourself or whatever. But it's it's placed that way on purpose. From like a archi- not from architectural, but from like a feng shui kind of you know yeah, perspective. Yeah, yeah. So basically, if if a mirror is facing the door. It will reflect good luck from coming into your house. Oh, hmm. huh. So the placement is very important of the mirror. Oh. Uh, so that's actually done on purpose. I learned about this really recently. That's interesting. Um, and it's also, also there's another aspect of it where if it's on the left or the right side of the door, it means different things. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't remember exactly what it is. Maybe we'll do this again sometime. Oh, to our uh, <laughs> Korean listeners and viewers, let us know. I didn't yeah. Yeah, why is the mirror on the left or the right side of the door? Okay, interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, ooh, can I, can I do the next one? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, this one's kind of an old school one. Don't whistle at night. I, I my, Did you know about this? No. So my mom actually taught me this one too. You never whistle at night because 
when you whistle at night, it summons the spirits and, and you know, ghosts or whatever that are around the area. Techn- like, you're not supposed to whistle because it, yeah, see? Oh my God, it's so scary. Yeah, and uh, uh, between <laughs> between the spirits and the ghosts, also snakes. So if you're not a snake person like me, do not whistle at night. Oh, so Although you're, you're a snake. Ooh, you snake. Anyways. Oh man, you're making so much work for a PD name right now. <laughs> yeah. So I guess whistling at night summons the dead or, or spirits or ghosts. So yes. Yeah. Don't whistle at night, I guess, guys. Mm. Yeah, yeah. don't do that. Um, I don't know why anybody that whistles, like, for any reason anyway, but yeah. yes. What else we got? The next one, um, I'm not going to lie, I do this a lot. It's mm-hmm. don't shake your leg. Yeah, so, like, if you're, like, ding, 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 I mean, you can't see our leg, but, yeah, you yeah. know. <laughs> I mean, I, I have a really bad habit of shaking my leg. My mom mm-hmm. used to tell me, like, even when I was younger, like, stop shaking your leg, like, Leg, your good fortune and luck is gonna leave you. Mm. My mom did the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, 보기 나간다 뭐 빠져 나간다 뭐 이런 얘기 있어 가지고. But I find myself doing it all the time. Like I don't even realize I'm doing it sometimes. Like if I'm watching a movie or like if I'm just sitting or doing studying or whatever. Yeah, if I'm bored or if like I'm nervous or something, mm. I like I find myself like shaking my legs a lot. I do it all the time. <laughs> yeah, but also it's it's like superstitious. You know, like it shakes off your good luck and good fortune, but it's also bad for your joints, guys. Don't shake. Yeah, your guys, so we're yeah. we're not getting any younger here. All right, so nobody, yeah. we need good joints and you know, take your vitamins too. Um, all right. So the last one that we have prepared for you guys is. Uh, don't eat chicken wings with your lover, whether it be your boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever. I've never. Been uh, this there's another one. There's another one similar like this. We'll get into it in a second. But never eat chicken wings. Why? Because if you eat chicken wings with your lover, they will fly away to another person. <laughs> oh, really? I feel like I know the other one you're about to talk about. The, the other one is the shoes. Yeah, don't buy like your lover's shoes because mm-hmm. like they'll like run off to mm-hmm. uh, another uh, person. See, we're very literal with these. You know, yeah. um, first of all, chickens can barely fly. Uh, they <laughs> yeah. can't fly very far. So, but anyway, I mean, still, I mean, I guess I get where it's coming from. And the yeah. shoes, uh, well, I guess that one makes sense too, kind of. But <laughs> well, I don't know about all that, but chicken wings are like my favorite part of the chicken so Mm. whatever well just never eat them with your lover because they will fly away very short distance of course yeah (laughs) so uh, we just went through a whole bunch of superstitions Mm -hmm. in america and korea um to our american and korean listeners who are watching and listening right now if you have any other superstitions you guys want to add on Mm -hmm. to the ones that we explained um leave them down in the comments below and even if you're not from America or Korea, let us know some popular superstitions that ex- superstitions super, that exist super, super. <laughs> superstitions that exist in your country, and yeah, just teach us about them. Yeah, because you know what, every country and every culture has their own. You know, the ancient Egyptians had them and their cats, and like you know, everyone has their own. So like, yeah. we want to learn. You know, today was kind of like an informative episode. It wasn't yeah. just me dogging you all day, but um, yeah. you know, I, we like to learn on this channel too. You know, it doesn't have to be all funny, funny. Yeah. Mm. Hopefully this episode was informative for you guys. Mm-hmm. Hopefully you guys learned uh, something from this episode. And yeah, we'll be looking forward to your comments uh, about superstitions. Yeah. And if, you, and if anybody from the States comes here, you know what not to do. And if anyone from Korea goes to the States, now you know what not to do there. Don't walk under ladders. Don't break mirrors. Don't yeah. open umbrellas inside, etc. cetera. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this very, very informative episode today. Yes. And you guys should definitely check us out on our YouTube, which is the Korean Cowboys. <laughs> yes. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and also, uh, you can check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts for the audio portion of this podcast. Yes. You guys can also follow us on Instagram at Korean Cowboys podcast Mm -hmm. you guys can also follow our twitter korean underscore cowboys we also have a tiktok if you type in korean cowboys it'll pop up make sure to follow us stop plugging that we barely use it (laughs) (laughs) and don't plug the website either it hasn't been updated in ages and also Uh, www.koreancowboys.com is our official website you You can find the links to all of our social media there or you can send us an email at hello at koreancowboys.com if you have any like comments sponsorships or you know whatever (laughs) yeah send us your comments your questions what you guys liked about this episode Mm -hmm. what you guys didn't like uh, what you guys want us to talk about, sponsorships, whatever you guys want to send yeah, us, you know, let us know. I mean, if you have some sponsorships, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but yes, we hope you enjoyed this this week's episode, and we will be catching you next week with another rootin' tootin' fun episode. Uh, so, everybody, goodbye. Aaron, are you ready? Yes. Let's go. One, two, three. Yeehaw! Bye-bye, Bye-bye, guys. guys.
Ooh, when we were fighting, bro, I just my whole wall was your name in red. I'm sure. <laughs>